Howdy y'all! Thank you for joining us today for this unboxing of a game I've been looking forward to and finally released and that is Unfathomable. Now what this is supposed to be is basically a reprint of the Battlestar Galactica game where you have like hidden deception. Of course if you know Battlestar Galactica where someone could be a Cylon. In this case it's somebody could be a corrupted or working for one of the dark gods. So basically just takes it and puts a Cthulhu skin on it. And yeah, the plastic's a little rippled here, so it's going to be kind of hard to see. I'll try to keep the glare off of there. But as you can see, it's about horror on the high seas where a boat is being attacked by, I guess if it's like grizzly fish and stuff, uh, Dagon, maybe Cthulhu. Yep. But yeah, so you can have some corruption and it's just all about keeping the ship afloat. As you can see, it is a game for three to six players. It is semi-co-op, two to four hours to play for ages 14 plus. And then if I can get the glare off of there, you might be able to make out basically letting you know what type of sleeves you're going to need. But once we are looking through the cards, I'll make sure to put the sleeve sizes and how many you're going to need on the screen. So... But, all right, let's tear into this, see what it's all about. All right. All right. So we're probably going to have a rule book and a reference. That's just typical fantasy flight, which is actually really nice because it just has a learns to play book, which is this first one we're going through, which looks like it's a little bent. But, which is just enough for you to be able to play the game, but it's going to go into great detail about every little thing, which is kind of nice. That way you're just not bogged down with a ton of rules, but if there's some situations that you hit, what they typically do is have a rules reference, and then the rules reference is usually... Set up kind of like an in, uh, like an index. It's got a glossary and everything. It's got an appendix. So, I mean, this is where you go more deeper into the rules and stuff. I really like this edition that they did. And, of course, they got an index on the back. So, really nice. Uh, I've been seeing this in all their games lately where they've been advertising their Arkham books, which I've actually read these two. Found them enjoyable, so worth checking out. All right, we got some punches here. They're in a plastic. Is the characters along with some of the other stuff it looks like. They are double-sided. Looks like they punch pretty easy. Of course, this is with the plastic on them. I can cut the plastic off, but it looks like they're punching easy. And actually, I found it easier just to punch these out like this. And then take the plastic off and pour them out. All right. We have the board here. I'm probably going to have to zoom out a little bit because I'm sure this is going to be a six-segment board. So it's going to be quite large. All right, I tried to zoom out as much as I could. Uh, you can see there are four dials here. Looks like I'm going to add something in there. And then we have, looks like a round tracker, somewhere for some cards to go, the deep. And then we have the main board that you will be playing on which is the boat. It's got all the different rooms and compartments and cargo. Let you know where all the decks are. And I'm sure the number segments all have to do with part of the game. All right. All right, like a typical... Oh, actually, this does, this does have stuff under the inserts. I was about to say, there should have been a ton of miniatures, but... So we got some miniatures there, which we'll take a closer look at. Cards, which we'll flip through at least. And just other accoutrement that we will look through. Nothing else under the insert. All right. Let's zoom in and take a look at all this stuff. All right, we'll start off looking at the biggest cards and go down to the smallest. 
Right off the bat, this looks like a lot of information, but it does look like this lets you know everything in the game that you can do and all the little miniature, small sentence rules that you need to know about like revealing the traitor, the rules for being in the brig, attacking, the human unrevealed traitor turn structure. And then the back has the interior space action abilities for each spot, just so that you can look on your card and see where each of the rooms are what you could do in each of the rooms and what you need to do with them sick bay brig you know and whatnot and there are six of those because you would have six players and then we have the revealed trader rules and advanced advancing tracks along with activating monsters and there's only three of those, I'm assuming, because there could be three traders and they didn't know how things go. That's a guess. I don't know how many traders there possibly could be. And then I'm assuming this is the characters. And we see the characters with their abilities, along with their story on the back, their starting space, and their starting item. But you can see each of these characters. The first mate, that was the captain of first, first mate. Here's the ship's surgeon. I guess I can show the backs, even though it's just the story. I don't see anybody just stopping all of a sudden. Reread all that. But there we go. We got the engineer here. We got the master at arms. I was trying to see if I recognize any of these people. I'm sure one or two of them have probably been in the Arkham game at some point, and I just do not remember. Here's the Mathematician. The Exile. The Jinx. And the Stowaway. So those are the characters, and then next we go to, there were two cards that kind of stuck out. We had the Captain and the Keeper of the Tome, along with their line of secession on both. So I'm assuming this is the leader of the traders and the Captain himself. Hmm. Guessing again. Next we have these cards, and these do have a nice linen finish on them which I find nice, very nice. <laughs> but I'm assuming these are the letting you know if you are a human, a hybrid, or a cultist. There's one cultist. All right. The next has this nice artwork on it. Nice big deck. I'm assuming these are... Oh, if I get them all on camera, I'm assuming these are the, oh, I can't think of what they were called. They were done during the Mythos phase. Mythos cards is what I think they were called in Arkham. I'm assuming this is kind of the same type of deal where these are the events that will be taking place each turn and trying to determine... What random things happen or things that you have to deal with on each turn. All right. All right, next we have the small cards. These shouldn't take too long. We got this deck. These look like, uh, I would say structural damage and whatnot and fleeing passengers. So I'm assuming these are conditions. We got this back. 
Calm Waters, Deep One Ambush. Hmm. Maybe weather or just condition deck? I don't know. I don't know. How the waters are acting or what's going on at the moment. Then these look like it's got the back for each character. So maybe an ability well equipped. Oh, I guess I can show that character again. Uncanny Fortune. Deep One Ancestry. Perfect number because she was the mathematician. Quick Cast. Arrest Order. Full Steam Ahead. The Ship's Doctor. Medical Intervention. Self-sacrifice and the captain, the unconventional leader. All right. Got this back. Looks like items maybe. Yep. And if this ain't thing like any other Fantasy Flight games, this is probably going to get some expansions added to it. Hopefully they don't bloat it too much. I mean, I've always heard good things about the um, Battlestar Galactica game. And I'm sure this isn't a complete reskin. I'm sure it's a re uh, reimplementation of the game itself. So spells. Yep. What would a Cthulhu game be without spells? I mean, just something to cause a little bit of loss of of sanity. And the last deck, and it's the biggest one out of the whole box. And it looks like a lot of these are the same, like nothing to hide. Coordinated effort. Bunch of coordinated efforts, forced learning, lesser banishment. Shriveling, those sound like spells too though, so maybe these are just actions you could pull off. Preparation, keen insight, watch and learn. Oh, there's different ones too, because there's a different watch and learn. They're the same, just take more whatever that is up there. Notice, shrug it off, so strength, rampage, combat training, true grit, determination, persistence, ransack, siren song, call to action, reinforcements, there we go. So that was the biggest deck. And the last thing to look at is just the miniatures. Give you a good look at those. Sorry to bore you through all the cards. I tried to just flip through them quickly. We got the stuff for the dials. We got the standees. Which I had the... Well, I guess I don't have the characters. Normally I have the characters for... Um, Arkham. And I can just use the same characters. But this one seemed to have new characters. So we'll see if we can find some miniatures. We just got a typical D8. All right. And last but not least, just looks like two different types of miniatures. Sorry, I was trying to get these to break apart. There we go. We got some deep ones here. Some grizzly fish. Oh. And then we have the bigger... Big nasty. But cool. Definitely going to get this one to the table. I've been looking forward to it. Hoping to enjoy it. Thank you for watching. And have a great day.